Life Christian Fellowships. Greetings to all of our members and friends that are joining with us today. Thank you for joining in to listen to the messages that we have for each week and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, I know you will be blessed by the messages that are out there. This is Communion Sunday, so be prepared at the end of this message with your cracker, your juice, uh, water, uh, whatever you're going to use for partaking in the communion service with us. Um, much has occurred this week, and you know that can easily cause you to become discouraged, to become disparaged, or even disengaged from it all. You know, but don't claim it. Don't allow yourself to yield to or fall into the negativities that are going on because God is in control. Um, God is going to make sure that his will is done through all of the situations that are happening. And just pray for everybody. Pray for um, our leaders, you know, to pray for the churches, pray for decisions to be made, for the right um, um, things to happen as far as what's going on in the land right now. And just remember that there's good news in life. We can expect that God always has something good that is planned for us that will far outweigh anything that is bad that is going on. So continue in faith, hope, and love. Um, enjoy the praise and worship that is coming up. And I will be back with you with the message. I'm so thankful that Jesus is who he says he is. That we can depend on the content of his character that our God is good and that he's working all things together for our good and for his glory you know I've noticed this that with notoriety comes expectation when you've heard of someone when you've heard someone's name when you've heard of someone's fame there is an automatic association of expectation connected to that person. And we wonder what it would be like to meet so-and-so. What it would be like to meet a superstar, a movie star, an athlete. And there's always this saying, it says, don't meet your heroes. Because so often, the people that we look up to and we characterize in a certain way only let us down but I'm so glad to know that I've heard some things about Jesus there is a notoriety that this God man carries and with it comes some expectations you know I heard that he opens blind eyes I heard that he can unstop deaf ears I heard that he can lay hands on the sick and they recover. I heard that he could resurrect the dead and bring them back to life. But I haven't just heard about Jesus. You see, I have met and experienced Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you today with confidence, he is everything that you've heard about him that's good. He is a way where there seems to be no way. He is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. He is a refuge and a strength. The righteous can run into him and are safe. And so today I wonder if you would elevate your expectation to what it is that you have not only heard about Jesus, but what you have experienced for yourself. We are in tumultuous times, difficult times to navigate. And yet these are not unique times to human history. We've been through difficulty before. We've been through struggles before. We've been through wars before. We've been through famines before. We've been through plagues before. And through it all, scripture says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Because the God who was the God of the Red Sea and the God of the den that Daniel was in with the lions and the God of the dusty streets of Jeru Jerusalem where he performed miracles is still the God of today. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Habakkuk said it like this, Lord, I have heard of your fame. 
I stand in awe of your deeds. But here's his request, and this is our heart this morning. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, would you remember mercy? So Lord, we ask you today, would you do what you are famous for? There is no fear, cause I believe. There is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress, over and over. I have a hope found in your name. I have a strength.
enjoy that praise and worship. And remember, today is a new day for a new beginning. We always say that because yesterday is gone, tomorrow has not come, but you have today. Make sure that you take every opportunity for the day that you have been given to love one another, to uh, encourage one another, to, to be lights to the world, to be witnesses for the kingdom of God and ambassadors for the kingdom of God. Because we know that God knows everything and that everything is in his perfect sovereignty and in his control. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all of the honor. Father, we just magnify who you are. Father, we just lift you up. Thank you for loving us so much that you cared enough to allow us to enter back into a right relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that we will never forget the love that you share uh, showed us uh, by uh, giving us that opportunity to uh, be restored, Father, through your grace, Father, through your love, through your mercy. Father, we just thank you that, Father, we can walk in newness of life, and Father, we can be the people that you've called us to be because you give us help to overcome the challenges in life through the person of the Holy Spirit that dwells within. So, Father, we just thank you for everything. Father, we pray that we will be pleasing in your sight. Allow us to repent where there needs to be repentance. Father, I pray for the world. I pray for all of the leaders in the world. Father, help us to turn to you, Father, so that we can uh, bring about the change that needs to occur in life, Father, so that things will be according to your perfect will and plan. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. If you receive that, say amen. We always start our messages with a few did you knows. Did you know that one plus God is always a majority? So whenever you have God on your side, you already have all you need. You have the majority. You have the advantage in life when you have God on your side. Amen? Did you know that you can never starve a person who feeds on God's promises? So always turn to the promises of God in life and feed on them because then your spirit will always be nourished. You will never be starving for anything in life uh, when you feed on the promises of God. God will make sure that your life is full, your life is fulfilled. Did you know that Jesus Christ is God's everything for everyone's total need? So whatever your need is, a relationship with Jesus Christ is all you need, is everything you need to fulfill uh, whatever the needs are you have in life. Did you know that Jesus Christ changed sunset into sunrise? Um, and we want to make sure that we understand that Jesus is everything that we can ever ask for and ever imagine in life. He will give us everything we need according to uh, his riches and glory. Amen? And did you know when you pray, you want to make sure your will is in neutral so God can shift it. Always put your will in neutral like a car so that God can shift it for you to go forward or backwards or whatever direction he needs you to move in. If you put your will in neutral so that God can shift it according to his perfect will and plan. Amen. Praise God. Um, our theme uh, that we're starting now is sharing the good news, sharing the good news. And my message for today is I got good news. You know, when it comes to good news, most of us were taught to share good things or to share things early in life. We were always taught at a young age to be people who share things and was willing to share. And typically, it involves sharing something of value, something that you treasured, something that was beneficial to the, the, the recipient, and it was good. You know, you never share anything that you felt was going to be harmful or bad to anyone. And when it comes to news, we all want good news, don't we? No one looks forward to getting any bad news. 
So good news is always something that is uplifting, something that will change your life uh, more often than not. Well, God has given mankind the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. There's nothing in the world that makes more, that is more valuable and beneficial than that good news to share to someone. So therefore, let's share it every opportunity we get. So Jesus himself shared the good news about himself. In Mark 16, 15 to 16, the scripture tells us, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. And anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. So Jesus started his ministry and was pre preaching that the good news of his life sacrifice was coming and he was going to restore mankind to himself because of what he was going to do. Jesus commands his disciples to preach the good news and offer salvation to all who believe it and are baptized. So Paul also shared good news, his perspective of what the good news was as well. In Romans 1, 16 to 17, he writes to the Roman church, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. Why? Because it, it is the power of God at work. The good news works for us. The good news gospel of Jesus Christ is God's power at work for us saving everyone who believes. And this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. Being right with God comes through the good news gospel. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. So it is all about faith and walking in trust and belief in who God is and what he has done. So as scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. So Paul was not ashamed of this good news. Why? Because it was the power to save. So what is this good news? Well, what did Jesus want everyone to hear? What did he want everyone to hear? And what power was Paul so excited to share with all of mankind? We know that the word gospel means good news. It pertains to salvation through Christ. It involves God's grace offered through Jesus, and it requires a response of obedience. But we want to look at three things th today about this good news gospel that I would like you to take away from this message today. This good news must be believed, it must be obeyed, and it fulfills promises. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians church in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3, he says, let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message that I told you. Unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. So that's the important thing about the good news is that Christ died for our sins. And it was prophesied that he would come and do just that to set us right with God and restore us into the right relationship. So Jesus died for our sins. And why did he do that? Because all have sinned. All are sinners. There's no one who is without sin. The only person that was ever without sin was Jesus Christ himself. Romans 3.23 tells us that for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So... The wages of sin is death. That is the other reason why Jesus died for us because the wages of sin is death. 
Romans 6, 23 tells us that for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So God loved us so much that he was willing to send Jesus Christ and Christ loved us, Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his life for us so that we can be back into right relationship with God. John, 1 John 4, 9 through 10 tells us that God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we, that, that, that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as a sacrifice. That is the good news, to take away our sins. So the other thing we have to see when we talk about this good news is that Jesus was subsequently seen by many. He was buried, he was raised, and he was seen. This is why the gospel is good news. In 1 Corinthians 15, 4 through 8, the scripture tells us in Paul's letter, um, he was bruised, he was buried, I'm sorry, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time most of whom are still alive, Paul was writing at that time, that most of them were still alive who had seen the Jesus, Jesus after his resurrection. And though some of them had died, then he was seen by James and later by the apostles. And last of all, as Paul was writing in his letter, he said, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. So there was many witnesses to Jesus' resurrection. He was buried, uh, he was raised, and people saw him. Many people saw him. So the Good News Gospel is the most important message that can be proclaimed today to anyone. While it is good for us to be involved in various social actions and the betterment of mankind, nothing has more lasting value than the benefit that comes from the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. 500 brothers and sisters saw Jesus at the same time. That makes a very strong argument for the gospel because most of them were still alive. So they could confess, they could be consulted, they can tell their eyewitness story. They were eyewitnesses of what had taken place. Today, something is considered true by the testimony of just one witness. You see all the time things that are happen, things that happen, and it only takes one witness to seal the situation, to seal someone's fate. Well, here you have 500 and plus witnesses. So, that is overwhelming good news and overwhelming, con con convincingly overwhelming that this was something that can believe and can be trusted. So how could anyone ever doubt the gospel of, Christ, of Jesus Christ? Amen? Romans 4.25 tells us he was handed over to die because of our sins and he was raised to life to make us right with God. So as long as we think we can please God in and of ourselves, we cannot be saved by grace. You can't save yourself. There's nothing you can ever do that is good enough for God's perfect will and his um, relationship that he wants to have with you. That can only come through a sacrifice through Jesus Christ. So when we confess that we are spiritually dead and are unable to help ourselves, that's when God can save us, when we confess that we can only be saved through what the, the way that he's made the way for us to be saved, and that is through Jesus Christ. The other exciting thing about this good news is that Jesus is now head over all things. Scripture tells us that 
in Ephesians 1, 21 to 23, now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leaders of any, or, or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world that is to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. That is good news that God has made Jesus Christ head over all things. There's nothing that he does not have full control and authority over. And he has done that for the church to benefit from it. So when you accept Jesus Christ and you enter into the church, which is his body, there's nothing that God has not done through him that you do not have access to because he has all authority and all power over everything. The church is his body, the scripture goes on and says, and it is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So what does this mean? This means that there can be a living connection between us and Christ. Through the Spirit, we are united to Him as the members of His body. That means that we share His resurrection, we share in His ascension, we share in His exaltation. In Christ, we can be seated in heavenly places, praise God. We can be seated with Him and all things can be under our feet because of our relationship with Him. God has given us power to tread and walk over serpents or things that are coming against us in life, evil that is coming against us in life. So the church and all of the followers of Christ have the potential to take part in and benefit from all that Jesus is and that he has accomplished and also all that he possesses. So in what ways do you want to know God better? That's the question. In what ways do you want to know him better? How can you begin to fulfill that desire? You always want to be seeking to develop a better relationship, a better knowledge of who God is in your life and the power that you have through Jesus Christ and what was done. Jesus' resurrection and ascension were visible demonstrations of God's power, and that power can be at work in your very life today. Second thing, the good news must be obeyed. We must confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Scripture tells us in Romans 10, 9 through 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. You're made right with God by believing in your heart. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you will be saved. So we must confess Jesus' lordship, which is his, leader, his leadership and authority, and his bodily resurrection. Faith must be in the heart when you make that confession. It must be part of your emotions, it must be part of your inner making, your will, the whole person in your heart when you step in faith and belief in your confession. Faith must also involve committing to Jesus as Lord in words and in actions. So it's not just about what you say, it's also about the actions you take because faith without works is dead. You have to act on what you believe. So Jesus must be our Lord at home, at church, school, on the job, wherever you go, he must be your Lord. He must be Lord in all intellectual, financial, educational, and uh, uh, recreational aspects of life in all areas of your life. Jesus will confess us before God if we confess him before others. So we want to make sure that our confession is out there for everyone to know what we believe. We want to be lights to the world. We want to be salt to the world. We want to be witnesses. We want to be disciples, student learners, and followers of Jesus Christ and ambassadors for the kingdom of God. People should see that in everything that you do. 
In Matthew 10, 32 to 33, it says, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, this is Jesus saying, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So don't allow anything or anybody to cause you to lose your faith and not to stand up for what you believe in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior and has entered into a relationship with him because of what you think others will think, don't let that stop you from doing what your heart is telling you to do and, and taking advantage of the good news gospel that is there for you, that Jesus, that God has made a way for you through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hebrews 3, 12 to 14 says, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. That is good news. You will share with all that belongs to Christ when you trust God and you believe and you stand in faith to the end. So we must read the word of God privately and personally and hear it publicly and corporately. We must meditate on it each and every day of our life. That's part of our dominion is to meditate on the word of God. We are to obey the word of God, which is also a part of our dominion, is to obey the word of God. Your faithful labor will not be in vain. Scripture tells us that in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless or in vain. Why? Because of the assurance of Christ's victory over death, we know that nothing we do for him will ever be wasted or lost. We can be steadfast in our service, unmovable in our suffering, abounding in ministry to others because we know our labor is not in vain. Therefore, the question is, what work of the Lord are you giving yourself fully to? because it will not be in vain, it will not be wasted. Give yourself fully to the work that God is calling you to do because of the relationship that he's allowed you to now stand in when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is good news. Third thing, good news fulfills promises. We are promised the forgiveness of sins and the Holy Spirit through the good news gospel. Acts 2.38, Peter writes, and when Peter was, was speaking to the crowds, he said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is made available when we repent and we turn to God and we make a confession of that relationship with, with God and we demonstrate that through our willingness to be baptized as well. Um, it shows that we are in obedient relationship with God um, by doing those things because Jesus himself was baptized um, to show his obedience to um, God's perfect will and plan as well. So our sins are blotted out and washed away Acts 3.19 tells us that now repent of your sins and turn to God that your sins may be wiped away. 1 John 1.9-10 tells us, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to forgive our sins, and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. So as I said earlier, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, except for Jesus Christ himself, who was sinless, a perfect lamb, a perfect sacrifice. The spirit indwells Christ 
Amen? The spirit indwells Christ. That's what we want to make sure that we understand, that through Christ, we have access to the Holy Spirit as well. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 12, 20, 19 through 20, Paul writes to the Corinthians church, Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. So we have to trust that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our bodies become a temple for Him to, for Jesus to dwell with us through the person of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 9 through 10 says, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature, you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. He goes on and says that the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And we have to believe that when Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and we confess who He is and we enter into that relationship, the Spirit of God, the power that raised Him from the dead lives within us as well. So just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit that is living within you. So all believers from the moment they accept Jesus Christ as uh, the forgiver of their sins and leader of their lives have the Holy Spirit that lives within them. This spirit can produce wonderful fruit in your life as well as we, look, we see in Galatians 5, 22 to 33 in Paul's letter to the Galatian church. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And these, there is no law against these things. These fruit can only come through the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do these things in and of yourself, but the power of the Holy Spirit allows you to love the way God loved, to have the joy and peace and patience that only the Holy Spirit can bring, the goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness that only the Holy Spirit can help us to become and do. Jesus promises this through giving us help through the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises abundant life both now and eternal. John 10.10 10 tells us that the thief, the purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. This quality of life made possible is made possible by, for, by our relationship to God, to God and through our relationship with God. We need to know that godly living has both promise in this life and the life to come. God gives us abundant living in this life and into eternal life. Praise God. 1 Timothy 4 8 tells us that physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So in closing, the gospel of Christ is good news. It is God's message of love and grace, not by works done to earn salvation, but by faith and because of God's grace. The promises help us deal with the real problem of sin in life. So what have you done with this good news? What have you done with it? What have you done with it? Now you've heard it. If not before, you've heard it now. You know as much as now as you will ever know. You know as much now as those who heard after the resurrection, if not even more. This is why I got good news for you today. I got good news for you, and I implore you and encourage you to believe it, to obey it, and receive the promises that come from it. If you receive it, say amen. Now I invite you to join uh, with me in our Dominion Confession of Faith. Heavenly Father, I commit this day to walk as a disciple of Jesus Christ, to walk in obedience to your word, to meditate therein day and night, 
to live a life of integrity, knowing that I have no unmet needs because of my inheritance in your son, Jesus, because I am an overcomer in this world through my faith in the name of Jesus. And if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, join me in this confession. I believe in Jesus Christ. I have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, I repent of my sins. I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And I now call upon the name of Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I will live as a disciple for all the remaining days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that confession, you've been born again into the body of Christ, and today is your new day for a new beginning. So today we will also have our communion. You can use any cracker, juice, or water, as I said at the beginning of the message. This is the time as Christians where we recognize the body and the blood of Jesus. It's important to know that communion was instituted by Jesus himself. He met with his disciples during the Passover supper. Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time, Father, of communion with you. Father, I thank you that your son, Jesus Christ, died for us, Father, and this is an opportunity for us to remember that sacrifice that was made. Father, help us, for us to remember his body, Father, that was given for us, his blood that was shed for us. And Father, we just thank you for everything you've done through him that allows us to have that perfect relationship, perfect relationship back with you, to be restored back into relationship with you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. The cracker that you have represents the body of Jesus, and the water or juice represents the blood of Jesus. There are three primary things that we're doing together when we are communing together. We are looking back at the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we are celebrating our salvation through Jesus as a church family and our unity as believers. We are looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. Communion is for anyone who has put their faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if this is your first time or you're just a regular a member that does this all the time. You, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ and have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, then you can join in this communion. Let us now partake together the cracker or the bread that represents the body of Christ. Body of Christ. Likewise, let's drink together the cup which represents the blood that covers our sins. Jesus then stated to his disciples, Mark my words, I will not drink again until the day I drink with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Remember, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. And until next time, be blessed. And please support our ministry by either of the methods following this message.
You're calling me over You're pulling me close With love you surround me You give 